let me discuss the sympathomimetic drugs which are acting on the beta receptors. So we have some beta 1 agonists, then we have beta 2 agonists and then the beta 3 agonists. Let me first take up the beta 1 agonists. Right, let me discuss the beta 1 agonists. So, if you take this particular the beta 1 agonist, the beta 1 agonist, the example what we have, it is prenaltrenol. So, that is called as prenaltrenol. So, remember this particular prenaltrenol is the only non catecholamine beta 1 selective agent right it is a non catecholamine and this is the only non catecholamine which selectively acts on the beta 1 receptors right now where is this used because it is a beta 1 agonist it has been promoted recently for the reversal of the beta blockade right promoted recently for reversal of beta blockade okay so that is your beta 1 agonist right example is prenaltrenol it is the only non catecholamine which selectively acts on beta 1 receptors and it is promoted recently for the reversal of the beta blockade. Then we have the beta 2 agonists. Now where are these beta 2 agonists used? Remember they are useful mainly in bronchial asthma right by acting on beta 2 receptors which are present in the bronchus there will be bronchodilatation and thereby they are used in the treatment of bronchial asthma. Now what are the examples of these beta 2 agonists? The examples we have many drugs we have short acting and as well as long acting drugs. The examples what we have is salbutamol this salbutamol is also called albuterol then we have levalbuterol then we have bitolterol then we have phenoterol then we have metaproterenol then we have terbutalin then we have pirbuterol the other drugs what we have is salmeterol and as well as formeterol this salmeterol and formeterol remember these are the long acting beta 2 agonists now apart from this salmeterol and as well as the formeterol we have r formeterol then we have carmoterol then you have indacterol so these are all the selective beta 2 agonists which are useful in the treatment of bronchial asthma next we have two more beta 2 agonists they are useful as the tocolytic agents right the tocolytic agents so tocolytic in the sense they are uterine relaxants right they are uterine relaxants the examples of this beta 2 agonist which are having the tocolytic action is right we have ritodrin right we have ritodrin and then we have the other drug isoxuprin Okay, so these two are your the tocolytic agents which are nothing but the uterine relaxants. One is ritodrin and the other one is isoxuprin. Alright, next. Next we have a beta 3 agonist. Right, next we have the beta 3 agonist. Now let me tell you what are the examples of this beta 3 agonist. The beta 3 agonists they include Mira Begron. Now, if you take this particular Mira Begron, Mira Begron 
is a new drug and how does this act it acts by stimulating the beta 3 receptors right it acts by stimulating the beta 3 receptors which are present in the urinary bladder right which are present within the urinary bladder and where is this indicated remember this particular mirab agron is indicated for the treatment of the overactive bladder okay so for the treatment of overactive bladder we use this particular drug called mira background so this is completely about your the beta receptors so beta 1 agonist the examples what we have is prinal trenol which is a non catecholamine and it is used promptly for the reversal of the beta blockade then we have beta 2 agonist mainly we have salbutamol terbutalin salmeterol formeterol bitalterol and all those drugs they are used in the treatment of bronchial asthma and we have tocolytic agents which are uterine relaxants which includes ritodrin and as well as isoxaprin then you have beta 3 agonist which is the example is mirabegron mirabegron it selectively stimulates the beta 3 receptors which are present in the urinary bladder which is used in the treatment of the overactive bladder 